However, he doesn't want to do that, right? And then I, I also don't think that George Pickens is the type of person that is going to stop what he's doing because he, he is good. He's, he's, he's going to make a statement with the way that he's playing and the way that he's celebrating. And the more that he does get, I guess, quote unquote, picked on by these refs, it's just going to make him want to do that more. But Susie, you can be good yep. uh, and effective and not celebrate, right? I mean, this yep. is where you saw it in the game. Uh, we've seen it around that this is where, like, Broderick Jones gets in his ear mm -hmm. uh, and tells him, hey, you can't do this because now you're affecting all of us. Uh, I, under I understand that you think that the refs are out to get you, right? Mm -hmm. But they're not. They're calling penalties. Now they're watching you more. They're not out to get you. They're just yeah. paying more attention to you now. Mm -hmm. No. That's what I mean. I feel like he now just feels he has a larger target on his back. And George Pickens, in a way, I feel is just going to keep acting out. But you heard head coach Mike Tomlin earlier this week. He said something along the lines of George Pickens needs to grow up. He needs to quit doing this type of stuff because at the end of the day, it is going to cost the entire team. It's not just going to be him as a whole. Uh, so it does impact everybody. So at what point does he stop being selfish and make the right choice for the team? Yeah, because uh, like I said, it's going to start costing the Steelers games, and uh, not and no one's going to like that over there. Um, and also, a guy that ha you know, you know, Pickens has a target on his back, obviously this week, and a guy that's going to be maybe out for him a little bit is defensive back Greg Newsom. He's the guy that pushed him into the stands, the fight afterwards, where uh, he wasn't even involved in that hell Mary. Uh, Pickens was asked uh, at the end of that scrum, at the end of that interview, uh, what he thought of George uh, Greg Newsom and. Uh, does he know him? And he's like, who's that? Uh, so that sparked all kind of controversy and, and a rebuttal from um, Greg Newsom in Cleveland, basically saying they, they know who he knows who I am. Uh, but, you know, that they're going to I think this is motivation. This is a uh, billboard material for the Browns. Yeah, no, I think that that is a great point going into this game. I think that it's going to be a little bit of a revenge game for the Steelers because they're not going to want to lose to the Browns uh, in back-to-back -back games. However, in a situation like that, whenever George Pickens is then coming out and saying, I don't even know who this person is, I mean, you're then putting a target on your back once again, not just with the way that you're celebrating, but now with the things that you're saying in the aftermath. I guess the big question here is, do you think George Pickens can be a team player? I think so. I think he's just had one of those seasons where he wasn't being targeted enough at the beginning of the season with Justin Fields in, and now he's starting to be targeted more with Russell Wilson in, uh, and they're creating that chemistry. However, I, now I feel like he's just getting more chances to, I don't want to say act out, but it, that's kind of what it seems like, right? And it has been that type of season for him. I mean, we saw the, the nose tape earlier in the season and then with all these celebrations. Um, but I feel whenever uh, players feel like they have a target on their back, maybe it just seems a little bit more, I guess, magnified right now with what he's going through. I think if he just toned it down a little bit, then he would see more of a team player. Yeah, I don't think he's going to tone it down, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> I mean, I, I know the one guy that can get to him is Mike Tomlin. Uh, we've yep. seen that in, in that episode of Hard Knocks, uh, but I don't know uh, if he's going to be able to tone it down. I mean, he's a guy that wants to celebrate. Uh, he's a competitive guy, uh, one of the most competitive guys on that team, uh, but that's not an excuse. Mm -mm. Um, so he has to rein it in a little bit for the entire uh, team, and um, maybe he does it this week, but... You know, at some point, you know, the reason this offense is working right now is because they're unselfish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Russell Wilson has thrown the ball to everyone. Ten different guys yep. uh, caught passes. Uh, and if he starts seeing less targets, you might see more of the acting out. Yeah, no, and I agree with that. Uh, whenever you have that many targets on your team that you can go to because Russell Wilson is that effective whenever he's leading an offense, you know, George Pickens might get thrown to a lot less. Uh, I hope that doesn't make him act out more. I hope that he can be a selfless player rather than a selfish player. Uh, but I never thought of that being a factor into what he is now doing. All right, 412 is the number. We'll be back in a couple minutes with your phone calls.
All right, welcome back to the Island Contracting Nightly Sports Call. This is our GMC tweet of the night from Central Catholic Football. They have a big one tomorrow. Huge shout out to the Steelers and Pitt Football for giving us the opportunity to do our final walkthrough at the UPMC Rooney Complex. Uh, special to class of 72 alum, Danny Smith, for our pre-practice message. I saw those guys coming in there today when I was leaving practice. They practice after the Steelers over there. Uh, so good luck to Central Catholic, Susie. Uh, I know that you covered a couple of their games this year. Yeah, I, I covered their game against uh, Woodland Hills in week two, and they absolutely annihilated Woodland Hills. And then I also covered the 6A championship, which I thought was going to be one of the tougher games. I thought it was going to be a little bit closer, and then they ended up crushing North Allegheny as well. However, however tomorrow against St. Joe's Prep, they have a task on their hands because St. Joe's Prep is an absolute powerhouse out of the east side of the state. Uh, I watched them annihilate North Allegheny last year in the state championships. So we will see how the tides go with that tomorrow. All right, well, the Whippeal has two chances to come home with a state title. Avonworth is playing earlier mm -hmm. than Central Catholic in the 6A uh, championship. All right, let's go out to the phone lines. We've got Josiah out in San Antonio. How you doing, Josiah? All right, so Rich, hey, Susie. Uh, hey, what's up? quick question. Uh, between George Pickens and Joy Porter, I really believe in the postseason. Between those two, one of them is going to cost the Steelers a costly penalty that's going to really mess them up. And, Rich, like you said earlier, I don't even think Tomlin is getting through to Pickens. I mean, we can sit here and say that he is, but consistently you keep saying this with Pickens. Cam can't get to him. Nobody can get through to this guy. And, Josiah, I think it's a big reason why he doesn't have a future with the Steelers. Maybe next year, obviously, he signed – through next year, part of his rookie deal. But I don't know if you can pay a guy like this $30 million, Susie. Susie, I, I don't think you can. Uh, devote $30 million. Uh, you got to pay a quarterback. Say you pay Russell Wilson $25, $30 million. You need a backup mm -hmm. uh, at some point. That's going to cost you money. Um, you know, they're going to have to find a running back. They're going to have to find a second receiver. So for a guy that's kind of a question mark, even though he's a big-time talent, uh, but he has some issues, and we've seen it unfold and could cost the Steelers a game. I don't think you can, um, you know, pay that much money uh, to a guy. But I think it goes back to, you know, it might not even be his skill set as to why the Steelers can't pay him. It might be simply his attitude as to why you can't pay him, right? If you're going to have somebody that is going to play selfish, that is going to cost this team penalties, that might end up costing this team games in the long run, then George Pickens is probably not going to be the guy that you want to give all that money to where you could be allocating it elsewhere on this team for other people that will be selfless to make this team better. Yeah, and I don't even know if he's worth $30 million. I know a lot of these guys, the top-end receivers, are making 35, dollars uh, like Justin Jefferson and C.D. Lamb. Um, I think Waddle makes around 28. I think I think those guys are all better than him. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know where he comes in at, but I know he's probably going to want something that starts with a three, and I don't know if the Steelers would pay him that. All right, let's go out to Stephen Baldwin. How you doing, Steve? Hi, Richie. Hi, Susie. Hey. Hello. I think it's time that the Steelers – have a closed door meeting with Pickett. I don't think it's going to yeah, work, with, Steve. <laughs> uh, but go ahead. But yeah. No coaching staff, no media, no ownership, no nothing. Uh, I, I think it's time. And if that doesn't work, send them packing. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of these guys think he's joking around, and, and he is, but, I mean, it's going too far where it's hurting this team. We'll see what happens this week. I mean, usually when he does something like this, Mike Tomlin can kind of get to him, rein him in, and you don't see it happen. Or at some point, you know, he doesn't get any targets or doesn't play as many snaps, but you need this guy to win. That's yeah. the problem right now. They need him to win, so they need him to be good in order to play, but they need him to win. Yeah, and then you simply just can't use him to, you know, show him what's up, right? Like, you, you that's going to make him more mad, not targeting him. So you have to be mindful of how you are utilizing George Pickens moving forward so that this problem doesn't get any worse. But also, the fact that everybody's talking about it is probably going to add a little fuel to this fire as well. All right, back out to the phone lines. We got Joe out in Ellison Park. How you doing, Joe? Hi, Rick. Hi, hi. Hi, Rich. Hi, Susie. Hey. Um, two questions. Um, first of all, um, first of all, like, uh, what's it going to take for Penn State to to be? Or I'm not expecting a win, but I, I'm I'm hoping for. I hope Penn State doesn't embarrass themselves 
But and secondly, are you guys worried about the Browns like doing what they did against as Steelers like, for the first second time? I'm a little uneasy. Feel like okay, because now I think the Browns have that confidence and that belief that I think that they can beat us. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what? I think trends matter. Um, I really do. I mean, the Steelers are bad on short weeks, uh, and they're really bad in Cleveland on short weeks. I think they're 0-4 now on Thursday nights in Cleveland. But on the other side, as bad as they are on short weeks, they're equally as good uh, with the Browns, against the Browns, at home at Akershire. They haven't lost since 2003 here in Pittsburgh. They're 22-1 and at home. Um, I, I, think, I think you're going to see a better game for the Steelers. Uh, I do not think they lose. I, I, I'm, I'm almost guaranteeing a win right now. Um, I think they're on a roll. They got some confidence. Even a couple of the guys said to me today during interviews that, you know, there's a different feeling this time around uh, for practice for the Browns, the Browns week, compared to last time. They only had a couple days. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they come out motivated. I, I don't think this game's going to be close. But, you know, the one, the one, um, you know, the one guy that potentially – could throw things off as Jameis Winston. Are we going to have a guy that throws five touchdowns or five interceptions? Yeah, no, I think that the Steelers come out with a win this weekend, too. I think that that's almost, I, for me, it's almost a no-doubter. Cassidy Wood and I talked about that earlier this week. I think the one game, if the Steelers wanted to lose, not wanted to lose it, but we're going to lose it in this heavy divisional stretch that started a couple weeks ago, it was going to be that first game against the Browns. Now, I think the biggest difference and factor in this game on Sunday is whenever they played in Cleveland, it was that blizzard snow game. It caught everybody off by go uh, off guard a little bit. However, on Sunday at Akershire, it's going to be 50 degrees. They have home field advantage and they are on a roll and they seem much more comfortable now, uh, especially settling in against Cincy. So I think that it's a no doubter that they win against Cleveland on Sunday. And they showed they can play in a shootout. Mm -hmm. uh, they can score with yep. anyone. Uh, that was a huge test, and we saw them do that against the Bengals. Uh, and if the Browns put up some points, uh, we know that they can come back yes. from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they showed last weekend that they can go back and forth with the team. It doesn't just have to be those close games where you don't know how they're going to squeak it out or if Chris Boswell has to score every single point. So last week was a very good proof that this team can put up a ton of offense. It's just how much can they do it against Cleveland? And like you said, what type of game is Jamison Winston going to have? Uh, and the first part of that question, he's talking about Penn State. I think Penn State definitely has a chance against Oregon. Oregon's pretty good. Obviously, the top team in the country, undefeated. Uh, but they had some close wins. Uh, they only beat Ohio State by one point. They beat Wisconsin by three points. So uh, Penn State hung in there with Ohio State, uh, maybe got robbed and had some bad luck on some plays. And James Franklin just can't beat Ohio State. Uh, but Penn State, uh, so I think they have a chance. It's a three-point I think Vegas has the odds at three and a half points right now. Um, I don't think they win, but it would be nice to see if they do. The winner gets a bye. Yeah, I'm going to go Penn State. You are. I am. Only because Bob Pelko, you had that great talk with him earlier on, and I'm a West A girl, so I'm, I'm going to be behind Bob Pelko with that win over Oregon State. Yeah, I'm rooting for Bob Pelko, too. Let's go out <laughs> to Michael in Patterson Township. How you doing, Michael? Well, happy holidays. Richie New. And Susie Cool, how do hey, you do? Good. Thanks Hello. for calling, Michael. Excellent. Steelers are going to have an excellent game. You know that. When it comes down to Penn State, as long as Penn State plays like they did against the Trojans with those trick plays, I think they got it in the bag. You guys have a wonderful evening. Nice seeing you on the tube. You too. I don't know if they have it in the bag, but uh, you got to utilize Tyler Warren a little bit more, right? Uh, Drew Aller has to have one of his best games. So, and then they have a chance. I think this will be a good game. I just don't know if they win. Uh, let's go out to James in Somerset. How you doing, James? Great, guys. How are you doing tonight? Good. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Listen, I want to just make a comment about how remarkable Zach Frazier has been for the Steelers. I, I watched him at West Virginia manhandle people, Big 12 level people, and yeah. I said, well, he's going to make a good pro. But he's manhandling NFL players. I mean, if you if you single out and watch that that young man, he he pushes people around on every snap. I, I am I am really amazed at how big and strong a man this this kid is, and how well he's doing. You know what? Thanks a lot. I appreciate the call. Um, he definitely has experience playing center. He, he did it a lot 
at West Virginia for a long time. Um, and that wrestling background, I think, definitely helped him. He's high on the Steelers list, and they're lucky to get him in the second round. This is the place he wanted to go. Ironically, I did a one-on-one -on -one with Zach Frazier that you'll hear tomorrow night and during our Steelers pregame show. But I think uh, there's no question about it. He's, in my mind, the Steelers rookie of the year right now. we got to take a break. Uh, Susie, we're going to back to wrap things up coming up next. Stay right there. Thank you.